this is Tim Pierce. Finally, it's legit for me to wear shorts to work. I'm going to show you all four of the rhythm guitar sections of this song. And if you click the link below, there's a private video not on YouTube where I show you the approach to the solo I just played. So click the link below. You'll get that video and a bunch of other private videos not on YouTube. A bunch of free stuff. Thanks so much for your support. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for subscribing. Let's do it. We're going to look at the verse, the chorus, the solo, and the bridge. I think that's all the rhythm parts. It starts out with an E chord and a big strong downbeat. It's the E chord that we all know, but I'll spell it out anyway. String 4, fret 2, third finger. String 5, fret 2, second finger. String 3, fret 1, index finger. And we strike it with one big downstroke. I form the full E chord, but I believe he's only playing the low two strings or the low three strings. And um, I, I mute with the right hand and with the left hand. And this hand, the side, the palm, the side of the palm right there, comes down and mutes. But also I'm muting over here by lifting my fingers gently off the strings so they're just resting on the strings but not on the frets. All six strings. And then this thumb actually comes in and mutes the low E string. So watch this. If you notice, I'm muting over here and I'm also muting with my left hand. And that's really important for this. But back to the, the uh, right hand, we're only going to strike the low part of the E chord. I think it sounds just as good to strike the whole thing. So you make it your own if you want, but the song is actually just down here. The low two strings are the low three strings. Next chord is a D chord. We don't actually do the third. What this is, string two, fret three, finger three, string three, fret two, index finger and we do a down, up, down. And we're aiming just for these three strings, strings two, three, and four. But I think it's okay to actually hit the top string as long as you're muting it with the flesh from the third finger. And it's down, up, down with the right hand. You could actually play the third. Wouldn't be bad, but that's not part of it. I like it better if you're just mood, m mooding, <laughs> if you're just muting the high string with the third finger, and that's that's how it is on the on the record, on the original. And then I play the A chord by barring my index finger across fret two, strings two, three, and four. And it's right in position, so it's easy to do. So you just go from the D chord and then drop the index finger over and mash it down so that it's barring across the second fret. And not too hard. For some of you, this might be one of the hardest parts of it, um, but you, you want to press down hard enough to where you, you fret everything nicely but you don't want to press so hard that you cramp your finger. So, to review. That time I did put the third in the D, but I shouldn't have. That's more of the sound. You're just playing the low partial of these three chords. You're playing the like root fifth, and then up here on the D, root fifth, and then root fifth on the A. And that's that's kind of the right, the right way to do it. But I, I enjoy hearing the whole chords too. I don't think there's any sin in that, so make it your own. The next thing is the, the really cool riff. And it's just walking down an E pentatonic minor. And what this is, is third finger on the first string, third fret. We play the open string, move to the next string, and do the same thing. Identical. Just one string to the next. And I'm doing alternating picking with my right hand, down up. And then I pull, when I get to the third string, I'm already in a perfect position for it. Take my second finger, second fret, third string, and just pull up a little bit. And you don't pick all of those notes, you just pick the first one. Right? See that? So pick, drop, and strike the open string. And I like to do down, up, down, up, down, up with my right hand. And then we return to the top of the riff. Let me review that whole thing. Three, four. This will kind of give you the timing of it. Two, three. One, two, three, four. Two, three. 
So I'm counting in my head, and it, you might try that too if it suits you, if you like, if it helps you. The next thing to do is the hardest thing, hard for me to do. Um, I have to drop my hand down to get this riff because it's this huge stretch. It's really, really uh, pretty challenging. And if I'm sitting down, I have to lean forward and drop my hand. My hand usually sits up here. I drop it down like that to get this stretch. If you're standing, this is where it benefits you to have the guitar a little bit higher then, you know, if it's down at your knees, this is going to be a hard one. So, what we do is, we take the index finger, string 5, fret 2, and that's our anchor note, because we keep returning to it. It's this B note. Okay? And then we walk up on the low E string, basically, from fret 4 to fret 7. So, we have the B note that comes, you know, alternates. And then we walk up on the low E string from 4 to 7. 4, 5, Six, seven. Okay, so I use these fingers to do it. I go index, third, index, little, index, little, index, little. And that's just my way. I'm not sure there, there might be another way to do that. And I like to slide up the last two notes because I like the way it sounds. I'll demonstrate that. And it seems like they do that once in a while too. I prefer that to just... I think it sounds a little better. And these notes are staccato, so check out your index finger. It's lifting up and muting after every staccato stab. So that's how I like to do that riff. And give yourself a lot of uh, credit for if you can't quite get that, because it's hard. From it's it's hard. It's such a long stretch from there to there. And then, in order to recover from this riff and restart. I can only play the low partial of the E anyway. So when I finish this riff, my restart has me has me playing the E a different way. And the way that is, is just the index finger barred across fret two on strings four and five, and I'm just playing the low partial of the E chord. Because I can't personally come down to that E chord quick enough, I feel. It's much easier for me to go rather than try and form, you know, the full chord. So do what you like and do what suits you, but just know that I do it kind of the easy way and in a way that works for me. So now I can do the whole cycle. As you can see, I kind of make the choice of what kind of E I want to play. As long as you are getting the low two notes on this E, you're doing it. But if you want to grab the whole E, that's fine too. One last time, review. Slowly. As you can see, if I stop thinking about it for a second, I get a little flubber on that last riff. So let's move on to the chorus. It starts with A, E, and B. And the A chord I do is with my index finger, just barred across the second fret, like we've done before. I'm grabbing uh, these three strings, strings two, three, and four, mashing it down. But I'm only really striking three notes, and it's these three. <laughs> strings three, four, and five. So it's kind of the one, five, one interval of A. Do the same thing on E right after that. Just kind of toggle your index finger over, just like that, and do the same thing on E, second fret, but now you're on strings four and five barred. And you're just, which you're just striking three notes with this hand. On each chord. Starting with the open A and the two adjacent strings, and the open E and the two adjacent strings. Okay, then we come up and we play this B chord, and I finger it with my little finger because I don't like to stretch. Lots of people stretch and, and do these chords like this, but I've always done it with my little finger. And what this is, is the little finger barred across strings 2, 3, and 4 on fret 4, right? And then the index finger on fret 2, string 5, grabbing the low B note. Okay? But you don't really play this third up here. Once again, it's just the three strings. Starting with the low B and the two adjacent strings. So, ends up being that. And then, 
you simply release your index finger and play the open A and come back up and you strike the B. So this piece is pretty cool sounding chord, I think. Great, brilliant. And it just happens twice in a row, as you heard. Three, four, one. And then it moves to G, D, and A. And this G is a really cool one because you're just using two fingers. It's the second finger arched across the neck on the third fret, low E string. And then the third finger on the second string, third fret also. And like I do a lot, this finger right here is muting string five. So you don't have to play the third. And this is a typical G right here with the third inserted, but we're not doing that. We're just doing the ones and fives. Those are intervals I'm talking about. Really cool sounding G. And you're not playing the high E string, so you're just aiming for these five strings. Okay? Then you can keep this, uh, this finger right here, the third finger, as an anchor point, and you switch to the D. Simple move. Index finger lands on string three, fret two. So, and then grab the A that we've done before. And this is, once again, just three notes. You're just playing the A string, the D string, and the G string. Just grabbing one, five, one of A. So this passage, last piece of this is you just pull up on the low G note, so go arch your finger across again, second finger, to the low E string on the G note, third fret, and you just pull up on it a little bit. So, this piece. And it's the same timing and the same cadence as the other piece. So three, four, one. And I just noticed that I'm playing all downstrokes. For this, it sounds pretty legit that way. I'll do the do all of it, and then we'll tack on the ending. Three, four, one. So satisfying at the end. So you just play the G and strike it three times. Do that same move where we can anchor. This stays the same. You grab the D three times, and you can even even strike that low A string in, in the middle of it too. Sounds good. It, it's not a bad thing if you hit the A by mistake. I'm gonna do it again at a little slower pace. Three, four, one. when those chords ring in tune. Sometimes it's a rare thing with an old Gibson Les Paul. So here's the rhythm part under the solo. You're playing the low E chord that we're familiar with, with the index finger, and it's just three notes. The lower partial. Okay, then we come up, and we use our third finger on the fifth string, the A string, and the fifth fret, and we play a down-up-down down with our right hand. Okay, then walk it down one fret and do it on the fourth fret. But it's the low E, and the next string over. Down, up, down over here. The most important thing about this is muting with the side of your palm. Mute, mute, mute. So that's how you stop the strings from ringing. I mean, you, you do the same thing over here that I've been doing where I lift up and I just rest the fingers, but the main muting happens in this particular situation from your, the side of your palm over here. So what just happened there is I came back to the E and I did the down up down three times. We're switching from a two string attack here to a three string attack. We're just on two strings up here. We come back down to the E and we're hitting, hitting three strings. Come back up and do that. And then we do a really cool open thing where we hit the E and the A and the E and the A and the E open but it's just three strings. And this, you just kind of smoothly move your hand 
to the same position what it's one set of strings over. And we're playing the uh, lower partial of the E chord and the A chord. So it's really satisfying to open that up after clamping down and locking down the sound. So I'll demonstrate. So it goes as many cycles as you want. You know, let the let the, the soloist play as much as he wants. Have him give you a nod, and the way out of it, the way to bail out of this thing, when you get to the last, you simply don't play that last E. It's pretty clever the way they get out of it. Go straight into the chorus. It's pretty cool. Let me demonstrate that one more time. The very last cycle of the rhythm part on the guitar solo. seamlessly go into the chorus. Hey, I just listened to the record, and at the end of the guitar solo, the rhythm part opens up. It's so cool. So what that is, on the very last cycle, they play the low E, but they don't mute. Okay? And then come up here and form this D chord up here. And what this is, in index finger, string 5, fret 5 on the A string, and then Third finger, string four, fret seven. In a little finger, string three, fret seven also. So it's this D chord, but I'm striking all six strings and everything's open except for these three. So make sure that, that, that this finger is not blocking any of the openness of the top two strings. And do the down, up, down. Okay, and then slide it down one fret and do it again. And that's what actually happens before the last. And then into the chorus. I'll demonstrate one more time. Very cool. Let's move on to the instrumental bridge. It's short, but it's very demanding. I think they wrote this to show everybody who's boss. It's an, a classic kind of E rock riff, pentatonic. That's the start of it. So play the low E note and then walk down, starting with your little finger on the fifth fret, A string, and then five, four, two. Back up to four, right, with these fingers. And, uh, little finger, third finger, index finger, third finger. And then with the second finger, pick up the G note here. Do it a little slower. And it's alternate picking. Okay, then the next piece is a variation of the riff we already learned, which is... It's just one note shorter. So you start with your index finger on the B note, like we did on that other riff. And then we walk up on the low E string, five, six, and seven. And they definitely slide up on this one, and it kind of makes it easier to play. Then you just move the whole show over to the A string and do the same thing. So move everything over one adjacent string and do it here in A. And that's twice. We did it four times on the E, twice on the A. We come back and do it twice on the E. And then right back into the chorus. It's super short, but it's super demanding to play at full speed, at, you know, the original speed. So give yourself a lot of patience on this, and your hand will get a little tired as you go through it, but if you practice it every day, you'll get it up to where it needs to be and get it bulletproof. Um, I'm going to try it one more time, kind of slow. Three, four... And as 
you do it, you feel the stretch and your hand starts to get tired because you're, you're, you're stretching so far between the little finger, which is picking up all these notes up here, and the B string, the, the B note that your index finger is picking up right here. So give yourself a lot of leeway and a lot of patience as you work this up to speed.